guys, Whitehead AJ here, and today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to make thumbnails. So first, you're going to have to have Photoshop, and then once you get Photoshop, you're going to create, like, file new, and you're going to make a new one. You have to make the width 1920, and the height 1080, because that's the size of thumbnail. And then it comes up with, like, a thumbnail background. But what you have to do is you have to get an Animal Jam background, but this is optional. You can use whatever background you want. It's just this is how I'm going to show how to do my thumbnails. And well, as you can see here, I searched up animal jam background and this is what comes up so i'm going to find one i don't want to use one with animals in it like this because it kind of draws attention away from the text in the thumbnail what i'm going to be using is this one right here i'm going to copy and paste it by going to copy image and then i go back to photoshop and do Control v since i'm on windows but on mac it's command v so how we're gonna make it blurry is going to filter and then going to blur and then going to gaussian blur if that's how you say it just make it kind of blurred but like out of focus kind of bl blurry looking not like this because that's way too much obviously 5.5 seems good i'm just going to be saying what i'm doing we make a new layer for the text and for the text we type whatever i'm going to type thumbnail i'm going to do thumbnail tutorial um, usually the font that people use is called Tiki Island, but there's another one, Snake in the Boot. A lot of people use that as well. It's one of those really used a lot fonts, so if you want to use a different one, then feel free because then it would look more unique, but usually people use this one, so that's what I'm going to use. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a stroke, which is an outline, and the second thing I'm going to do is change the position to outside, and then I'm going to make it bigger so it's visible. Black outlines typically don't look good in my opinion. I'm going to change it to white. And the next thing I'm going to do is add a gradient overlay. You can mess around with this any way that you want. I'm going to add color burn. I want to change the color from yellow to something else, so ignore me if you're not going to change it. I'm going to make it blue. The color blue is nice. To get back to these settings, you have to double click the layer, and then you go to gradient here. I will change it to this one. Since it's on color burn, the black part like of the gradient makes it darker. This is how people usually do the like shiny looking text, and you can change the angle. I'm going to add more, so I'm going to go to inner glow and just... and then kind of make it kind of glowy. I don't really like how it looks normal, so to make it look better, go to color dodge or linear dodge or overlay, but that doesn't always look good unless you turn the opacity all the way up. And then to add a shadow, go here. I would uncheck use global light and then you just make the angle whatever you want. I'm gonna make it 58. That's what I want it to be. Personally, I think the shadow is too dark. I'm gonna make it a little lighter. We could do that, or we could make the opacity all the way up, and then change the blend mode from multiply to normal, then change the size to zero, which looks good, and just make the shadow whatever color you want. I want to make it color that was in the text. You can also go and add a pattern overlay, change the like scale of the pattern and stuff. I like these, even though they look kind of low quality. And never ever change the blend mode to normal, and then have the opacity low. It doesn't look that good, it looks washed out. So I'm going to change the blend mode to overlay. It looks so much better, as you can see from this to this, it looks way better. And just make the opacity low, you don't want it to be too much and if the gradient overlay looks a little too intense maybe you want to change the opacity on this so you can see the pattern like under that too and there we go we have some nice text right there another thing you can do is go to bevel and emboss i'm just going to change the opacity to zero you can just play around with the settings but i really personally think shadow doesn't look that good and i turn the highlight all the way up and then change the blend mode to color dodge so it looks like there's like a light shining on the text so then we're gonna click okay how you resize it and stuff is you press command t if you're on a mac or control t if you're on a windows but before you resize it make sure you're holding down the shift key if you don't this is what happens if you're using shift this is what it does it just stays like the exact size i'm gonna make it bigger and i'm gonna rotate it you can do whatever you want um, I personally think that if you make all your thumbnails different, it looks better. Since we already did a lot of stuff to this text that I don't really want to do again, I'm going to press Ctrl J since I'm on a Windows and just move it. And I'm going to write tutorial and move it like in the middle. I'm going to change this text color to like a lime. But personally, I don't think this really fits. I'm going to do something on the background now. I personally like to make my background black and white, but if you don't want to make it black and white, you can always colorize it. Basically, all you have to do to make it black and white is go to Control U, Mac is command. I'm not going to keep repeating it. Go to saturation and you just put it all the way down. It makes it black and white. But if you want to colorize it, just go to colorize and saturation all the way up. We have a black and white background. Click OK. It kind of looks kind of dull. So we just add another layer, go to the paintbrush, maybe add some fading color. Since the blue text is at the top i'm gonna add some blue fading down here with this brush i resized it to 1805 pixels and i'm not gonna put it over the text because then it's covering the text and you don't really have focus on your video you put it under the text i personally like to have it like that another thing you can do is add color around the edges a lot of people do this i would make the brush not too big 
Just find the right size. Maybe like 650. Yeah. I think that looks about right. And then put it underneath the blue fade. And you can add more colors. And if it's not like blurry enough for you, just go to blur and then Gaussian blur. What we're going to add now is maybe some Animal Jam clip art if you don't want to use an animal or a spike or anything. And all I did was search up Animal Jam paintbrush. If it's transparent like this, you can copy and paste it into Photoshop. So you're going to need to go to view image. And then you're going to need to right click it and save image as. Then you go back to Photoshop and then you get, you open your files and you literally drag it onto Photoshop. I can do it like that and then just drop it there. Anywho, this is the brush that I'm gonna be using, the closest thing I could find that relates to it. I'm gonna chain this red part to blue to match the rest of the thumbnail. Go to this magic wand tool, you have to select it here. Click the color, use a blue brush and basically do that. Press Control D to deselect. You press Control T to resize it. I'm gonna make it kind of big so it doesn't look like a random thing in the thumbnail. And then to add an outline, you go to stroke and then make it outside size make it bigger than the like i don't know kind of big and then make it white because black doesn't look that good and it kind of makes things look too dark i don't know that's my opinion but i'm gonna add a drop shadow to that as well it looks really flat and then i'm gonna make the opacity like low and the distance not too far you don't want the clip art to cover the words so you're just going to move the words to fit in with the thumbnail and you might want to zoom out because when you look at a video the thumbnail is only this big and this is what people are gonna see what i want to do is i want to add a little inner glow to make it not look so flat The text still bothers me, like I spent so much time just rearranging it and it still didn't look good. You want to make the text pretty big, but not cut off because that's going to bother people. <laughs> you can also add a box of dotted lines under it, and just make a square. I don't really like it that solid looking, I'm just going to make it kind of blending in more. I'm going to make it tilted the other way. If you want to add any extra overlays, you can do that. Like I'm going to add this circle and to green screen basically, you use the, you hold this down and you go to magic eraser. And then I'm going to make this bigger. Putting things in the corner that aren't really a focus in the thumbnail is a good idea because you don't want to distract people from the actual words, so I'm going to put this one behind the words. This is just to add more decoration and make it look cooler. It's going to have some, like, it's just not going to look as clean. Like, you can see the lines of where, like, green was. I'm just going to double click the layer and then do color overlay and just make it white. Yeah, and then you do the stroke if you want it to be, like, bigger. And you can make it white, too. And then if you want to put the same effects that you did on one layer to another layer, go to new style, name it whatever you want. And then one years, it'll show up. So when you double click the layer, it opens up like this. But at the top, it says styles. So you can just click the one that you just made. I'm going to make this one blended. If you added a color overlay, you have to go to rasterize layer style. And then you have to go to color dodge or add whatever. You can also add shapes. Like if you hold down here and go to custom shape tool, you can add shapes like stars by clicking here, clicking shapes, and then clicking add pen. And then should be there you just drag your mouse i'm just gonna have to change it to a solid it's just the outline of a star because there's no fill on it i'm just gonna press ctrl j to duplicate the layer and then to make it fill you just click here and then you click on the color and then you can make the stroke just like that i'm gonna put it behind the text so it doesn't cover up the text obviously oh by the way when you're changing this don't change the opacity only change the fill that is what you do if you change the opacity then it'll look really dull and it just won't look right it'll look kind of washed out but if you have the option change the fill if you think that you can't really see the text that well due to there being a lot of things, you can just add a rectangle, some other color. I'm just going to make a blue one. And now you can see the text better. So there we have this thumbnail that I just made and this is all I'm going to do to it. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed and learned how to make a thumbnail. I'm really sorry for the mic quality and anything I did wrong. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and request more tutorials if you want any. So yeah. But please tell me specific effects that you want to know because I can't just teach you a whole program. That, that'll take a long time, so.